In this episode, we're going to be talking about adding an email to our database and being able to store our customers' emails, not just a name, as we've been doing so far. So if you gave this a go on your own, hopefully you came to a solution that actually worked and you were able to save an email. And the last thing we would want to do is probably have it displayed after our customer's name. But for those of you that didn't, let's start from scratch so I can show you how to do it. Back to PHP Storm. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to modify our migration, right? So remember, the migration is what describes our database. Now, you could have taken several approaches to this. During the development of your project, you're going to be constantly changing migrations. And as long as you don't deploy your migrations to a production server, this is perfectly fine. You can keep modifying your migrations as many times as you need. Again, once you kind of shipped a version of your project, from there on out, you're going to have to generate a new migration. But since we have not shipped anything, we can go back to our create customers migration. And let's add a new string and we're going to call it email. OK, so so far, so good. So we have a name and now we have an email. So back in the terminal, we actually need to roll back that migration because it already ran. So we need to step backwards one migration and then migrate the database again. So we'll say PHP artisan migrate rollback. And what rollback will do again is take one step backwards. And when we see that, we see that we rolled back this create customers table. And now PHP artisan migrate. And now when we migrate forward, now we re migrate this customers table. Except that this time, our change to the migration, which was to add this email column, is now there. Okay. So that is the part for the database. The part for our controller is that we need to add a second field here. So the field we're adding is going to be an email. And for now, we're just going to say it is required. We are making a new customer. We're giving it a name and then let's give it an email. So customer email is equal to request email. All right. Then finally, in our customer blade file, we need to add a new input. So we'll add this here and we'll say the name for this is email. Okay, so far so good. Now one thing we don't have here is we don't really have any labels. So let me add just a P tag here with name. And let me add another one here for email. Just to clean it up a little bit. Let's go back to my form, hit refresh. And there we go. It looks like my email is basically touching my name. So let's add a little bit of spacing at the bottom. Let's just say PB2. That's padding bottom two. And there we go. We just have a little bit of space. So if we hit add customer, of course it says, wait a minute, the name field is required. Let's say John Doe and then hit add customer. And then we don't really get any errors, but we see that nothing got added to the database. And this may seem a little strange at first, but it's really not. Let's check out our blade one more time. In our errors, we are fetching the first error for name and not for email. So we actually need another one just for email. So what I will do is I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to put this right underneath name and then I'm going to add a second one for email. So what happened was that we did get our error but we were not properly displaying the errors for email. So let's refresh one more time, John Doe, and then I'm going to hit add customer with an empty email. And there we go. The email field is required. We'll say John Doe, John at example.com, add customer. And there we go. So we have John Doe in our database. However, we're not displaying his email. So let's change that now. So back down here, we are echoing out his name and then in parentheses, I want to echo out maybe his email. And let's give this maybe a muted color. We'll just say class of text muted. Let's refresh and there we go. So we have John Doe and then we have his email. So we are successfully saving a name and an email for our customer inside our database. Jane Doe and that's Jane at another test.com. Let's hit add customer. And there we go. So we are able to add our name 
an email to our customers list. Now one thing I want to show you here, if we say John Doe and leave our email blank and hit add customer, John Doe is gone. We are no longer getting that back. And typically that's not what happens. Typically what happens is that the name comes back in the form. So the user doesn't have to fill out the entire form again. Imagine this form had 20 plus fields and all of a sudden because they missed one field, they have to retype the entire form. That's not great user experience, right? So let's fix that now. So Laravel has a really nice function called old. And so what we could do here is say the value is, and we're going to output old, and the key that we are looking for is name. So old looks at the request and says, hey, do I have a name? And if you do, it goes ahead and returns a name. And that's the function that's going to help us get the functionality that we're looking for. Let's go ahead and also add that to our email. So email, let's hit save, let's come back. I'm just going to pass in an email, john at example.com. I'm going to hit add customer and there we go. So now we see that the name field is required. However, we see that john at example.com is still there. Okay, let's try it the other way. Another person, hit add customer and there we go. We still have another person up here email at email.com. There we go. We have another person with email at email.com. So now with this new old value, we're able to bring back any fields that did pass validation and give them back to the user. So they don't have to fill out the whole entire form. All right. One last thing I want to fix. So if we add another John Doe, but then passed in a random string into email, that does pass validation. But that's clearly not an email. So how do we make Laravel validate this as an email? That's easy enough. Let's go back to my customer's controller. And so we're going to have under the email validation rules, we're going to say it is required and it needs to be an email. If we come back, let's type that in, type random strings, add customer. And it says mm -mm, the email must be a valid email address. So now, we are protecting ourselves from passing in a blank field, which of course says the email field is required. And if we pass in a random string, then we get the email must be a valid email address. Again, revisiting back on these validation rules, if we visit the email validation rule, there it is. Adding email verifies that the email is properly formatted. Awesome. We're making great progress. So keep toying around with this idea maybe add a title field and maybe a phone number for our customers. Keep playing around with this form until you get comfortable adding more and more fields to the database, migrating the database, and then adding it to the form and making sure that you put the appropriate validation rules for each of those fields. And when you're ready, let's move on to the next lesson.